Today, Rinpoche gave an extremely clear explanation of dependent origination and emptiness and showed how simultaneously within one mind, conventional truth and ultimate truth can be understood. Okay, so stanza 17, therefore, uh, uh, so once again we're looking at Lama Tsongkhapa's uh, In Praise of Dependent Origination, uh, and we are at stanza number 17 uh, in the root text, um, and we are using uh, Junu Jetsundrapa Shidrup's commentary uh, to help us understand it. Uh, so this reads, Therefore, who could challenge you? You who proclaim with a ryan, lion's roar in the assembly of learned ones repeatedly that everything is utterly free of intrinsic nature. Um, okay, I just wanted to look at some etymology in the wording. Um, so uh, when we have the various uh, texts where the middle way philosophy is taught, such as the Perfection of Wisdom texts, the Sutra of the Heart of Transcendent Knowledge, uh, the Sutra of the Heart of Transcendent Knowledge, we find the statements such as no eye, no ear, no nose, no tongue, no body, etc. Um, all of these um, statements in that particular sutra are negating the intrinsic nature of the subjects that are mentioned. Uh, so texts such as the Heart Sutra and other Perfection of Wisdom texts and commentaries that teach uh, uh, the middle way philosophy, the, um, 
uh, middle way consequence school, Madhyamika Prasangika school, uh, can't be negated. Um, so when we look at, uh, when we gather an assembly of learned ones, so here it says, uh, in the assembly of learned ones, uh, um, uh, this is referring to the hearers, the solitary realizers, the bodhisattvas, all of those students of the Buddha, all of those learned students of the Buddha, um, it's saying that um, there's a, a bunch of, there's many statements made here. Who can challenge you? So then that relates to the assembly of learned ones. And you get, gather the assembly of learned ones. There's no one who can challenge that statement of um, that everything is utterly free of intrinsic nature. Um, so if you gathered all of the learned ones together, no one would refute that statement as the ultimate statement, uh, or no one could uh, ultimately refute it. Um, just as a translator's note, some may disagree, but they just haven't reached that ultimate understanding yet because of some ignorance that's still there. Um, so uh, when you gather the learned ones, they would concur that this is the, the ultimate view. Uh, and it says, therefore, who could challenge you um, within this um, there's a word um, that they'd have, like it almost says you'd have to be insane. Uh, there's a word um, in here in Tibetan that's used for possession when someone's possessed or crazy. Um, so that's within this, therefore, who could challenge you? Um, it, it doesn't, I don't know how they would word it in the English into it, but there's a word in there that, that who person, it would have to be insane uh, to challenge this statement. Um, so uh, in, in it says, uh, and then uh, Rinpoche said that uh, you proclaim with a lion's roar. When we look at all of the animals' speech uh, or the noises that animals make, the lion's roar is very, very loud among other animals. It stands out. Um, so it's saying that this this stands out among other speeches because uh, if everyone who is learned gets together and thinks about it, there's no higher view. There's no one who can challenge this view of the middle way consequence school. Um, and so, and that view is things are um, utterly free of intrinsic nature because they dependently originate. They are not truly established because they dependently originate. Uh, so this sign of dependent origination establishes their their lack of intrinsic nature, their lack of inherent existence. Uh, so, Ngayit Sampa Kanga Lhasa Nrimiche. Yeah. That's not what the Tsa-Tsa Sunda Tanda Maribha. Sumba Rajin Gaya Mepa Dhan, Dala Dhani Nda Nyuyu, Naja Tanji Tema Nyi, Mangadu Ahme Chukwu, Dhani Nyuyu Jutian Chi, Tata Wala Mateng Shi, Le Sun Dhani Chue, Going Ten and Tending 
我们的人生活在这里面我们的人生活在这里面我们的人生活在这里面我们的人生活在这里面我们的人生活在这里面我们的人生活在这里面我们的人生活在这里面我们的人生活在这里面我们的人生活在这里面我们的人生活在这里面
Uh, and then it says it is through the reason of dependent origination that one does not lean towards an extreme that you've declared this uh, excellently is the reason that you're the teacher at Unexcelled. So it's because uh, that of this teaching on dependent origination and lack of intrinsic nature, lack of true establishment, that the Buddha is considered the highest teacher. There is no higher teacher uh, that ha um, exists. Um, so, uh, yeah, unexcelled speaker here, um, and the speaker specifically um, being um, uh, about the Dharma, so then there, in, in the translation, you would just say teacher with a capital T. Um, instead of just regular teacher, it would be the teacher with a capital T. Um, if you were looking at um, how to translate it directly here, it's translated as the speaker unexcelled, or, um, but it's really just teacher, but the teacher that we, we explain. Um, okay. Okay. <laughs> What Okay, okay. okay. Maybe Okay, one nature. Okay, so uh, now when we're, the meaning of this we find in the Sutra of the Heart of Transcendent Knowledge. We find this um, um, convergence, um, this lack of mutual exclusion between the subject of free of intrinsic nature and functionality or functionality independent origination. Uh, so we find in the Sutra of the Heart of Transcendent Knowledge where it says form is emptiness, emptiness also is form, emptiness is no other than form, form is no other than emptiness. Uh, so these four statements, for the first statement is form is emptiness, means that form is empty because it is not true, uh, because it dependently originates. So form is not truly established, therefore it's empty of true establishment because of dependent origination. Emptiness also is form, means that the emptiness doesn't negate the existence of form. Um, in order for emptiness of form, there needs to be form. So because there is emptiness of form, there's form. So it ne negates the idea of non-existence. Um, Form is no, and then it says, uh, form is emptiness, emptiness also is form, emptiness no other than form, form is no other than emptiness. These other two statements are saying that they have one nature, uh, the fo form and form's emptiness um, are, have one nature, and that nature is lack of true establishment. So, um, uh, so the Emptiness is no other than form. Form is no other than emptiness. So it's saying that they have this one nature, uh, the two of them. Uh, the Shemayano. 
Zule Tomini Shemayeno the Ngo Chi Zu Tumbo Tumani Zuzus Zu Dembatu Tumba is less so. Tumbany Zuzu Mepa Yo Zu Dembatu Tumba in the Zu Mabel some Maris who is Nene Tumani Zuzu. Uh-huh. Zu le Tumbany Shemay Tumany Lizuzu Zu Zu Tumbany Tom Monchi Zu Tumbany the Zu Tom Monchi. Okay, so form and form's emptiness are of one nature. So that's the clean translation of those last two. Um, for, emptiness is no other than form. Form is no other than emptiness. Um, so they're of one nature. Form and form's emptiness is of one nature. So the first establishes form's emptiness because of dependent origination. So form is not truly established. The second establishes Form's emptiness establishes form, so it shows its non ex its lack of non-existence. It shows its existence. So this is how you see that form being empty doesn't make it non-existent. Form's emptiness doesn't mean form's non-existence. The non-existence here is the non-existence of true establishment or of intrinsic nature. So, so this is the difference. Um, so. First statement, form is emptiness, is the lack of true establishment. Emptiness also is form. Empty, for, empty, form's emptiness establishes form. And emptiness is no other than form, and form is no other than emptiness, shows how these two have one nature. Um, they are one, of one nature. Form and form's emptiness is one nature. If you have form, you have form's emptiness. Form emptiness, you have form. <laughs> So then we find so then we find uh, the cheek Jason. Then we find a quote from the root wisdom text. And one thing just from before, uh, Rinpoche read the entire commentary um, just quickly, like to himself, and pointed out parts. Um, and I just I missed one in here. And it's just basically that when we look at all of the opponents, we look at non-Buddhists, we look at um, Buddhist opponents to the fact that things are not truly established, that things have no intrinsic nature. Um, when we, we look to all of them, their arguments don't harm the, the assertion of the lack of true establishment of phenomena. So they are unable to harm or contradict or refute the lack of intrinsic nature because of dependent origination. So um, all of the opponents, are, uh, when they posit their reasons, their reasons don't, aren't tenable. They don't, they aren't, um, they don't negate what the Buddha has taught. No matter who challenges it, it's not negatable. Uh, so uh, now we find a quote from uh, Nagarjuna's Root Wisdom text. So Jurisjo, Okay, uh, so we have a quote from the Root Wisdom text that 
So those things that um, um, come into being through dependent origination, uh, those, thing, those things that come into being through dependent origination uh, are empty. And so this is the the Rimache Deni Jor J Dapa De the Banjuanga Ten Tuba Ny to Shes, Tendim Jusen Chuna de Mamaduba, Sombares, Tendim Jusen Chuna de Mamaduba Shu Lujuro, Lutini Tabatanji Jamba to be Juris, Jushi Dabates, Jushi Dream but to be Tabares, Jushi Dabate. Then Omilan knows, then we must go to Milan. Then Omilan wrote. Okay, so this becomes a, a this this. So th- okay, I'll start over. So the um, root wisdom text says the things are uh, things arise through dependent origination. Uh, therefore, they are empty. Um, this mindset allows one is the to advance and this is the pathway of the middle this is the middle pathway um, so uh, what this means is is this, this mind uh, that understands dependent origination becomes a cause for uh, liberation becomes a cause for uh, Buddhahood um, so it's because of that <coughs> that we say uh, that it is the the path of the middle way so when we say path uh, we're speaking of um, path in terms of there are five pathways, the path of accumulation, the path of uh, preparation, the path of seeing, the path of meditation, the path of no more learning. We find that um, implicitly within the Sutra of the Heart of Transcendent Knowledge and the, the mantra that's embedded within it that says, Teata Om Gate Gate Para Gate Parasangate Bodhisoha. Uh, gate, first g- gate referring to the path of accumulation, the second gate referring to the path of preparation, uh, paragate referring to uh, the path of seeing, uh, parasangate referring to the path of meditation, uh, bodhisoha referring to the path of no more learning. So these five pathways are what path is referring to, and the middle way path, when, w- when we look at characteristic. Um, everyone, you know, as Buddhists agree that those five paths, that the characteristic path of the, the middle way is that things are intrinsically, um, have no intrinsic existence. Uh, so uh, that's what the meaning of this is. Um, and if you go to the root wisdom text, um, you can find this quote. Uh, just re- remember, this is the path of the middle way. Uh, is the last statement that's made. Um, so you, you could p- find it pretty easily within it if you just remember those. This is the path of the middle way. Is the last sentence. Uh, so um, mind becomes a cause. Compound two extremes. Five paths. D Sungram Lesso. So, Okay, so uh, also those, um, the statement in the Sutra of the Heart of Transcendent Knowledge that says form is emptiness, emptiness also is for- form, is referring to the true truths, uh, the conventional and ultimate truth. We would say form is emptiness is ultimate truth, emptiness also is form is conventional truth. Uh, so this is how we would break it down in terms of two truths. Omanjuba 
ngonye ngonye nzeba juros tital tijer ngoke ata zumba thonga ye ngonye ngonye nzeba juros chwe thaji ke tenu ngonye ni ores ni de deba ni tres to da deba ton kudu deba ni ores jubale ngonye ngonye nzeba ni juros na kudu deba to da deba ni tmarba ni nzeba juro she she ta Tejin ngo ba ta ji tu na ya tejin ngo ba ta ji tu na ya tu ni ta le ro tu ji wan jo wo ti ta shi ro ta shi shi song ba ta ro os tejin ngo ba ta ji de ba du tu na ya tu ni ta le ro tu ji wan jo de ba du tu ba le le ju le de ba ji wan lo su ba tu ji wan re s tu ni ta le ro tu ji wan jo ro os shi song ba ta ro os ส่วนเงินอย่างนั้นจะบอกทุกอย่างเงินอย่างงี้จะไปจุดสิช่วยทำจิตเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวบ้านนี้อยู่อะไรสิอืมงูงูบุกย
Okay, um, so no matter what phenomena it is, it depends, it dependently originates. So if it's an impermanent phenomena, it dependently originates. If it's a permanent phenomena, it dependently originates. So we say that all things, whether permanent or impermanent, dependently originate. So even in terms of things that are permanent, uh, we can say uh, that they dependently originate because they originate through designation. Uh, so um, uh, there's, there's always that the naming process, de designating it as this or that. So um, even in the case of permanent phenomena, you have this designation um, that takes place which uh, negates the idea that it doesn't dependently originate. Uh, so um, all, and then we of course have the impermanent phenomena, independent uh, origination becomes easy to understand uh, because it, we see that there are causes and conditions uh, that give rise to um, the various phenomena. Uh, so um, this is um, how that is understood. And then uh, going to Nagarjuna's root wisdom text, we find a quote that says, things don't arise uh, from self, uh, from other, from both, or causeless. Um, so um, this statement that is made in the root wisdom text is used to negate various traditions uh, so, or various um, uh, schools of thought or tenets of thought um, that are incorrect. Uh, so, for instance, things do not arise from self, 
Um, this is in order to uh, negate the um, Zhang Chempas, the Samkhya school tradition. And the Samkhya school believed that all results had caused, uh, I'm sorry, all causes had the result inside of them already, uh, that they were loaded with the result. Um, so um, we find various negations made in um, Dharmakirti's commentary on the Compendium of Valid Cognition where he says uh, if there is an ant on a blade of grass that has a hundred future lives as an elephant, are there a hundred elephants standing on that blade of grass? Uh, how is it holding all of those elephants? Uh, and then also if um, the result is in the cause, is all the food that you eat feces? Um, so are there, is there feces already in the food that you're eating. Uh, so there are various negations that were made to show uh, the lack of logical consistency with this idea that the result was already loaded within uh, the cause and just waiting to come out. So there were um, ma many negations that were made and specifically made to um, get rid of this Samkhya view. Uh, the idea that things arise from other um, uh, was used to negate an actual um, Buddhist middle way school, the middle way autonomy school, which is uh, there's when we look at middle way school, uh, we look at Madhyamaka, there's two categories. There's the consequence, which is the highest view, and then there is the autonomy, which is the lower school of the middle way, and then there's two schools of the autonomy school. Uh, middle way prasangika is just one school um, and that's considered the highest view and the um, autonomy school of the middle way still had true establishment from other uh, so this was used to negate that uh, the um, establishment by both uh, was to negate the Jain tradition uh, and then the establishment of, of causeless or, or the idea of things are um, caught, not caused at all, or causelessness, um, this uh, part is used to negate the um, nihilist view. So the nihilists believe that things weren't caused, that there is no karma, there is no Four Noble Truths, there is no cause and effect, um, that things are random. So there, there isn't this um, um, nature that's trackable. Uh, according to the nihilist, and that things don't matter because there are no causes and there are no results. Um, so um, this idea that things don't arise from self, other, both, or causeless, they arise through dependent origination, um, is the view of Nagarjuna. Um, and this is the quote from the Root Wisdom text. And I believe that that's everything. Tatalian, Tabi Tanzi Okay. 
Jodine vela mantens. Raju ba meche. Wa din so wa de. Then Rimache the um umi tenjo or kuna the depo jula den. Tanju wa ge wa de jodine vela den ga de. Lesso. Tanju tu mo ma meche. Jodine de vela den na drebu ju ye na jero ma tu. Drebu me na ju ja tu ma. Lesso. Ti ye zo jodine de vela den. Lesso. Drebu ye zo jero wa. Lesso. Lesso. Then a Ranjupa de Kalangamari. Ranjupa was in Juden Drebu Julatin, Judebula Matas. Two China. Okay, so um, there are two uh, two different types of dependence that we can look at uh, when we look at the tenant systems. Rimache read through this and I barely understood any of it, so I said, please just break it down uh, for me on the spot. I need to understand what it's saying. So basically, there are two ways of looking at cause and effect and, and dependence. Uh, so the fact that effects depend on causes is something that all of the tenant systems agree with. So the Vabashka school, the Sutra school, the mind-only school, and the middle way school. Um, all of them, all of the categories of all those schools agree that all results depend on causes. What separates the middle way consequence school from all of the other schools, including the middle way autonomy school, is that they say that causes depend on results. Um, so they say that there's this relationship that if there isn't this, uh, um, if there is this result, then the, the, this establishes there's a cause. So the fact that there's a result establishes a cause. And the fact that there's a cause establishes the, the potential for a result. But the fact that there is a result here means that there is a cause. So this result, according to uh, the middle way school, uh, establishes cause, so therefore there is an interdependence uh, as far as the establishment goes between cause and effect. The ef uh, cause depends, the effect depends on cause, but cause depends on effect in the sense that there, if there is an effect, there is a cause there, uh, and if there is a, a cause, there will be an effect. You know what I mean? So if there is an effect, there's a cause. If there's a cause, there will be an effect. The consequence school is the only one who says that the effect, the, the cause relies on effect. All the other schools say only that the effect relies on the cause. Okay, Digson. So there's this interdependence that the uh, middle way prasangika, the middle way consequence school establishes that's very, very uh, slim. It, it's, it's like threading a needle as a note. Um, that it, it is establishing it between these two um, extremes and it's, and it's somehow between these two extremes and it does so by saying that this cause depends on the result because with the result there that's a sign that there's a cause so there's an interdependence there for es establishment so when you see uh, a result, uh, uh, just as a translator's note, when you see a child, then there must be parents. So the fact that there's a, that child, uh, the parents, de vice versa, it all depends on each other. Dison Rimche. I confused it more as soon as I interject. <laughs> The Tacuzzo de Matone, the Pensu, Pensu Carzugre, Tunitubas, Cuzzo de Matolo de Gitondo de Matolo Trushegre, 
Tata de batu lo te kunu de batu lo tu shegre chuna de mama de batu lo te ge tanye de yebal tu shegre yebatu lo le tu shegre tanye de yebatu lo ane de mama de mama de batu tu lo tu shegre tu she ba de le ngota jo ba ta de le me de zwa ka chindi chola te nan te ba ji ji tu me es so ji ge te so ba te te ba te te ba ya shere tu vas entendre son bon tu vas te voir assurer ce tu veux contenter tu vas t'en chez on entendre chez moi what to say but tende son bon de songer le tu vas te tu vas assurer ce okay so now we move on to the next stanza uh number 20 and uh i believe that 20 and 21 yeah 20 and 21 are combined stanzas All of this is devoid of essence and form, I'm sorry, and from this arises that effect. These two certainties complement each other with no contradiction at all. What is more amazing than this? What is more marvelous than this? If one praises you in this manner, this is real praise, otherwise not. Um, so uh, it's saying that this is the, this topic, again, of dependent origination. Um, and this um, idea of void of essence arises from this arises from that being uh, able to not be mutually exclusive um, and have no contradiction and, and ha these two certainties exist simultaneously without contradiction um, is the middle way consequence view and this is saying that That view is the highest view, the most important view. So therefore, this praise of that view is the highest praise, is the best praise. Okay. Dixon. Oh, yeah. Let's support each other. Oh, What does this say? This is better. Dele ngota juba dan dele me du juwa ka chundi chela tu nan tu ban ju jie du mi tu du ta zuma This idea of uh, in here it says um this is real praise otherwise not another way to translate it I like this what is more amazing than this what could be more wonderful there is no other true way of praising you than this um so if we're looking at the absolute way to praise you would praise the buddha for what the buddha's essence is and that's the teaching on emptiness really um it's interesting when you look at the words and how you can bend them or not okay this way yeah でも、ちょっと、でも、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっ
So the commentary is saying that this there is no higher uh, there's nothing higher that has been spoken than the explanation of how simultaneously conventional and ultimate reality e- exist. Um, so they support one another. If you have this conventional truth, you have the ultimate truth. And if you have ultimate truth, say, forms emptiness, then you have form, you have conventional. So it's showing here that how, what is more amazing than a teaching that shows how in one mind you can simultaneously hold these two realities about one object simultaneously without contradiction. The, the idea that, um, that things are empty of essence and that from this cause that effect arises. The idea that you can state that there is this cause and effect that can occur simultaneously while being empty of essence. Uh, um, the fact that these two don't co- contradict each other in one mind, in one continuum, or that a, 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 a one mind can realize this simultaneous uh, nature um, is amazing. Um, and it's saying it's the highest thing that has been spoken. Um, so, uh, just make sure I didn't miss anything. I missed many things because it's a lot, but um, it's, it's speaking of that, that conventional and ultimate truth uh, can... The conventional and ultimate truth of an object um, supports each other. There's support. Conventional truth supports ultimate truth. Ultimate truth supports conventional truth. And there's a concomitant. There's a, a, a relationship of dependence there um, that um, is understood. And once you understand. Uh, the emptiness of, if you truly understand an, uh, something's emptiness, then you truly understand its conventional nature as well. Ngayit Sampa Jipa. Yeah, it's. She <laughs> <laughs> Chunna 
o adını ki kasatlar yes cirimizi kasat o da en son doğru sıra So right here uh, we find many quotes that, that Jay Remache is using just to support um, this idea that um, one is to be free of the two extremes, the extreme of nihilism and the extreme of stan substantialism. Uh, if one uh, um, feels that things are truly established, there is the fear of, of uh, falling into substantialism. Well, there, you fall into substantialism if there is a belief that things are truly established. And then the idea that things are not truly established, if misunderstood, can lead you to nihilism. Um, so there is a danger, um, and one needs to um, stay between the two. All phenomena are empty. Um, it says in the Dini, Shanchu Sem J. Shanchu Sem J. Becha, the Do Gare, Shanchu Sem. Shanchu Sem J. Sem J. Sem J. Shanchu Sem J. Basa Yuro. Suchi Sem. Okay, so there's a text um, called the Commentary on the Bodhisattva. Uh, and I said, who wrote it? And Rimeshi said, maybe uh, Nagarjuna, not sure. Um, but it's just one quote. And it just says, all, pheno all phenomena are empty. Um, and then, and then in the middle way view. So it's just supporting over and over this idea that um, things are not truly established because they dependently originate, and that functionality is not disrupted by lack of intrinsic nature, that this can arise from that and simultaneously be empty of intrinsic nature, be empty or not truly established without contradiction. It's It's oh, Sasha. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so we're going to end there. Thank you, everybody. Uh, sorry about my con initial confusion. And uh, uh, there's so many scholars uh, that have, you know, helped in the making of this commentary. Um, and it's quite a difficult commentary, so it's easy to get uh, confused uh, about sections and, and parts. Uh, so that's why, uh, just as I just did. Um, so I'm just marking here. And I will do that each time now. So we'll do the concluding mandala offering in dedication prayer. This is a really great book. I, oh wait, we'll do, let's do the concluding mandala offering and dedication prayer, and then I'll do that after. <laughs> the fundamental ground is scented with incense and strewn with flowers, adorned with Mount Meru, the four continents, the sun and the moon. I imagine this as a Buddha land and offer it. May all sentient beings enjoy this pure realm. I dedicate whatever virtues I have collected for the benefit of the teachings and of all sentient beings, and in particular for the essential teachings of Venerable Lozandrapa to shine forever. I send forth this jeweled mandala to you, precious Guru. I dedicate all this virtue to emulate the knowledge of the hero Manjushri and likewise Samantabhadra as well. With whatever dedication is praised as supreme by all the conquerors who traverse the three times, I also dedicate all my roots of virtue for the sake of auspicious deeds. In that pure land, surrounded by snowy mountains, you are the source of all benefit and happiness. All powerful Avogateshvara tends in Yatso. May you stay until samsara's end. I pray for the long life of the precious Kensir Wandok, upholder of scriptural and realizational doctrines, the spiritual friend who trained extensively in the five great philosophical texts, with exceptional wisdom and perseverance. Tuji Rinpoche Gutsu Shapi Denama. So uh, make sure we get a bag uh, and yeah. everybody can bring home some stuff. <laughs> and uh, thank you again, everyone, for coming. And we'll do the... Uh, not on that. I want to... Are we ready? <laughs>